Greetings Celestial Seekers. Today we're diving into a mystery that's been hidden for far too long, a secret that could change everything we know about the origins of humanity. There's a story, one that has been suppressed and kept from the public eye, and it all centers around a forbidden book, the Book of Adam and Eve. But this isn't just another version of a story you already know. This text goes deeper, darker, revealing terrifying possibilities that the world was never meant to see. Why was this book, written in 1966 by Dr. Thomas, immediately seized by the CIA? What secrets does it hold that the government didn't want us to uncover? The more we explore, the more questions arise. What if this book contains the truth about humanity's future? A truth that could shake the very foundations of our existence. As we unravel this mystery together, I want to encourage you to share your thoughts in the comments and join the discussion. We're just scratching the surface of something far bigger than we realize. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and check out the other videos we've shared. We're just getting started on this journey. Exile from Eden, a different story after Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden, their life changed in ways they couldn't have imagined. According to the book of Adam and Eve, the world they were thrown into was nothing like the paradise they had known. It wasn't just a punishment of losing their home. It was a total shift from a peaceful, perfect existence to a harsh, unforgiving reality. The book describes how they struggled with hunger, fear, and loneliness. The ground was no longer fertile, and they had to learn how to survive in a world filled with danger. Unlike the familiar story in the Bible, this version goes deeper into their emotional suffering. Imagine the pain of going from a world where everything was provided, where they were in constant contact with God, to a place where they felt completely abandoned. They pleaded with God to take them back to Eden, but he remained silent. They felt the weight of their decision and were overwhelmed by the harshness of their new life. In this version of the story, it's not just physical survival that Adam and Eve face, they also struggle with the concept of death. For the first time, they realize they will grow old, suffer, and eventually die. This awareness brings them to a state of despair. Adam is said to have had visions of the future, seeing not only his own suffering, but the suffering of all his descendants. He foresees the pain and hardship that humanity will face because of his and Eve's actions. The book of Adam and Eve describes a world much darker and more chaotic than what we see in the Bible. It speaks of the loss of light, as if the very act of being expelled from Eden caused the world to become dimmer. Could this be a metaphor for the spiritual darkness that entered the world, or is it possible that they witnessed an actual change in the environment, a shift in the natural order of things? The text suggests that their exile wasn't just about leaving the garden, but about facing a world that was now more dangerous and unpredictable. This raises a question for us today. Are the struggles and disasters we face now part of that same curse? When we look at the natural disasters that occur in our world, floods, fires, earthquakes, could they be connected to the exile of Adam and Eve? The book of Adam and Eve hints at a cycle of destruction and renewal, one that may have started with their banishment and continues to this day. As they wandered, Adam and Eve began to understand that they were not only responsible for their own suffering, but for the suffering of future generations. This realization weighed heavily on them. They knew their actions had set something in motion that could not be undone easily. Is this something we still live with today? Do we continue to pay the price for choices made long ago? This version of their story is unsettling because it doesn't offer a quick fix or easy redemption. It paints a picture of long-term consequences. The promise of redemption or the curse of eternity. As Adam and Eve grappled with their new life outside the Garden of Eden, their thoughts naturally turned to the possibility of redemption. Would they ever be able to return to the paradise they had lost? Or would they and their descendants be doomed to suffer for eternity? In the book of Adam and Eve, this question becomes central to their journey. Adam repeatedly cries out to God, asking why they must endure so much pain and whether there is any hope of finding peace again. His prayers, however, are often met with silence, leaving him and Eve to face the unknown. 
The book offers a much more detailed account of their inner turmoil. It portrays Adam as being filled with guilt, not just for himself, but for all the future generations that would suffer because of his and Eve's actions. He feels the weight of humanity's sins on his shoulders. Eve, too, is filled with regret, but she also starts to realize that their journey is about more than punishment. They begin to see that their suffering might have a greater purpose. In one passage, God does respond to Adam, but the answer is not what he expects. God tells Adam that their suffering will not end soon, but after many generations of their descendants go through similar trials. The implication is that humanity as a whole will have to endure hardship, learn from it, and eventually seek redemption. This cycle of sin and suffering is presented almost as a necessary part of human existence. But what if this is more than just a story? Could this idea of an endless cycle of hardship and redemption explain the challenges we face today? The Book of Adam and Eve suggests that every generation must confront its own struggles, just as Adam and Eve did. Whether it's wars, diseases, or natural disasters, each era faces its own set of trials. The question that the book raises, though, is whether we can ever truly break free from this cycle. Is redemption something we have to earn through repeated suffering? Or is it something we can achieve if we change our ways? As Adam and Eve continue to wander, they start to understand that their journey is not only about their personal salvation, but also about the fate of humanity as a whole. They realize that their choices will ripple through time, affecting everyone who comes after them. It's a sobering thought, one that forces them to think beyond their own suffering and consider the bigger picture. This leads to a powerful moment in the story where Adam, desperate for answers, asks God if their suffering is eternal. God's response is cryptic, but profound. He tells Adam that the suffering will end, but not until humans have learned what they need to from it. It's almost as if God is saying that the pain and challenges we face are necessary for growth. But how do we know when we've learned enough? How do we know if we're close to breaking the cycle, or if we're still stuck in it? The Forbidden Knowledge One of the most mysterious and fascinating parts of the book of Adam and Eve is the concept of forbidden knowledge. In the familiar story from the Bible, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which led to their downfall. But in this version, the knowledge they gained goes far beyond understanding good and evil. The book of Adam and Eve suggests that by eating the fruit, they also gained a terrifying glimpse into the future. A vision that showed not only the beauty of creation, but also the inevitable destruction of the world. This knowledge was so overwhelming that it nearly drove them to madness. Imagine having been sheltered in paradise, only to suddenly become aware of the full spectrum of human existence. The suffering, the death, the wars, and the natural disasters that would unfold across time. Adam and Eve didn't just see their own fate, but the fate of all their descendants. They saw that humanity would repeat the same mistakes, generation after generation, with devastating consequences. It's said that Adam, in particular, was tormented by visions of the future. He saw wars tearing apart nations, families suffering in poverty, and natural disasters wiping out entire cities. The burden of this knowledge weighed heavily on him, knowing that he and Eve had set this chain of events in motion. The book describes Adam falling into deep despair, feeling as though the future was hopeless. Could this vision of the future have been too much for any human to bear? But it's not just the future that this knowledge revealed. The Book of Adam and Eve also hints at deeper cosmic truths, secrets about the very nature of the universe. The text suggests that Adam and Eve learned about the cycles of creation and destruction, patterns that repeat throughout history and shape the fate of the world. These cycles, the book says, are unavoidable, and once they begin, there is no stopping them. This brings up a fascinating question. Is humanity doomed to repeat the same patterns over and over? We often hear the phrase, history repeats itself. But what if that's more literal than we think? Could it be that we are trapped in a cycle that began with Adam and Eve? A cycle of knowledge, power, and destruction that continues to this day? And if so, is there any way for us to break free? The Book of Adam and Eve doesn't just suggest that this forbidden knowledge led to their fall. It also suggests 
that it may have been a curse passed down to all of us. This knowledge, this awareness of good and evil, life and death, creation and destruction is something we all carry. Think about it. Why do so many of us live with a sense of impending doom? Why does it often feel like we're on the edge of something catastrophic? Is this the same knowledge that Adam and Eve were burdened with? It's also worth considering how this knowledge has influenced the course of human history. Throughout time, humanity has been driven by the pursuit of power and control over the land, over each other, and even over nature itself. But the more we try to manipulate the world around us, the more it seems to slip out of our grasp. The Book of Adam and Eve suggests that the misuse of knowledge is what leads to humanity's downfall time and time again. What if the knowledge we inherited from Adam and Eve was not meant to be used for control, but for understanding? Instead of trying to dominate the world, perhaps our purpose was to learn how to live in harmony with it. But somewhere along the way, humanity lost sight of that purpose. We became obsessed with power, with progress, with trying to conquer the very forces that were meant to teach us. Could this be why the book of Adam and Eve was hidden for so long? Did it contain truths that were too dangerous for people to know? Truths that would force us to confront our own role in the cycles of destruction? Or was it hidden because it offers a way out of this cycle? A way for humanity to break free from the patterns we've been repeating for thousands of years? These are the questions we're left with as we dive deeper into the book of Adam and Eve. It doesn't offer easy answers, but it does challenge us to think about the choices we make and the knowledge we seek. Could it be that the key to our survival lies not in gaining more knowledge, but in understanding the knowledge we already have? What do you think? Are we using the knowledge we've been given wisely, or are we still repeating the mistakes of the past? Let's discuss it in the comments. The Prophecy of the Pole Shift one of the most striking and controversial parts of the Book of Adam and Eve is the prophecy of the pole shift. This prophecy suggests that the Earth has gone through, and will continue to go through, catastrophic changes that reshape the planet. These changes aren't just minor events, they're world-altering disasters that wipe out civilizations and force humanity to start over. The pole shift, in this context, refers to a sudden and dramatic movement of the Earth's magnetic or physical poles, causing massive upheavals such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and floods on a global scale. In the Book of Adam and Eve, it is said that Adam and Eve were shown visions of the future, including the destructive events that would eventually bring an end to entire civilizations. The prophecy describes how these pole shifts occur in cycles, and each time they happen, the world is thrown into chaos. According to the text, humanity has risen and fallen many times before, each time reaching a high point of civilization before being destroyed by a pole shift. After each destruction, the survivors are left to rebuild, starting from scratch, much like Adam and Eve did after being cast out of Eden. What makes this prophecy so chilling is that it suggests that we are living in one of these cycles right now. Some scientists today even believe that the Earth is overdue for a pole shift. While they talk about it in terms of magnetic poles shifting gradually over thousands of years, the prophecy suggests something far more sudden and catastrophic. If the Earth were to experience a dramatic shift, the consequences would be beyond anything we've ever seen. Entire continents could be submerged, cities could be destroyed, and millions of lives could be lost in an instant. Could this be why the Book of Adam and Eve was suppressed for so long? The idea that a massive, unavoidable disaster is looming could easily cause panic, especially if there's nothing we can do to stop it. But the book doesn't just offer a grim prophecy. It also gives us clues about how we might survive such a catastrophe. According to the text, it's not just about physical survival, but also about spiritual readiness. Adam and Eve's story is one of endurance, faith, and learning from past mistakes. They were forced to face a harsh new reality after their fall. And the book suggests that we may have to do the same when the next pole shift comes. The text hints that those who are prepared, not just in terms of resources, but in their understanding of the Earth's cycles, will be the ones who survive and rebuild. 
It also suggests that ancient civilizations may have known about these cycles and built their societies in ways that could withstand them. Think about the ancient structures like the pyramids or Stonehenge. Some people believe these monuments were designed with knowledge of the Earth cycles in mind. Could it be that our ancestors left us clues about how to survive these disasters? If the pole shift prophecy is true, it raises a lot of questions about the future. Are we prepared for such an event? Can our modern society, so reliant on technology and fragile infrastructure, withstand the kind of destruction that this prophecy foretells? And even if we could survive physically, would we be ready to rebuild a new world from the ground up? The Book of Adam and Eve doesn't give us all the answers, but it does suggest that these events are part of a larger natural cycle that we can't escape. The key, it seems, is not in trying to prevent the inevitable, but in learning how to adapt and survive. It's a sobering thought, especially when we look at the state of the world today. Climate change, natural disasters, and geopolitical tensions all point to a future where instability seems inevitable. Could the pole shift prophecy be a metaphor for the larger changes we're already seeing in the world? What do you think? Is the idea of a pole shift something we should take seriously? Or is it just another doomsday prophecy? Could humanity really be living through cycles of destruction and rebirth? Or is there another explanation for the rise and fall of civilizations? Let's talk about it in the comments below. The Cycle of Destruction and Rebirth As the Book of Adam and Eve comes to its conclusion, one of the most powerful themes that emerges is the idea of a recurring cycle of destruction and rebirth. This theme suggests that humanity, much like the Earth itself, is trapped in a pattern where civilizations rise to great heights, only to be brought down by catastrophic events. After each fall, there is a period of rebuilding, and from the ashes of the old world, a new one is born. This cycle has been playing out since the beginning of time, and according to the book, it will continue into the future unless something changes. This concept can be unsettling because it forces us to confront the possibility that everything we know and value might one day be lost, only for history to repeat itself. The Book of Adam and Eve portrays this cycle as not just a physical process, but a spiritual one. It's not just about the collapse of civilizations through natural disasters or wars, but also about humanity's repeated failure to learn from its mistakes. Each time a civilization falls, it is because people have forgotten the lessons of the past, becoming arrogant and disconnected from the natural order and the divine. Adam and Eve's story is presented as the first instance of this cycle. Their expulsion from Eden marks the beginning of a pattern of human disobedience and the consequences that follow. They were given paradise, but their choices led them into a harsh world of suffering and struggle. Yet, even after their fall, they were given a chance to start over, to rebuild, and to seek redemption. In many ways, their experience mirrors what happens to civilizations throughout history. When things fall apart, there is always an opportunity for renewal and growth but only if humanity is willing to change. The idea that this cycle continues to this day is both profound and challenging. We live in a time of incredible technological and societal advancement, but we also face immense challenges, climate change, political instability, and economic inequality, just to name a few. Some argue that we are on the brink of another great collapse, much like the civilizations of the past. If the Book of Adam and Eve is correct, then this cycle of destruction and rebirth is not just a random occurrence, but a natural part of our existence, something that has happened before and will likely happen again. But is there a way to break free from this cycle? That's the big question the book leaves us with. It hints that redemption is possible, but it requires a fundamental shift in the way humanity operates. Instead of repeating the same mistakes, falling into greed, corruption, and disconnect from the divine, Humanity must learn to live in harmony with the world around it. The book suggests that only by understanding and respecting the natural order and by seeking spiritual wisdom can we hope to escape this endless loop of destruction and rebuilding. There are many who believe that ancient civilizations, like the Egyptians or the Mayans, understood this cycle and built their societies with this knowledge in mind. Their structures, their cultures, and their spiritual practices 
were designed to endure and to honor the forces of nature. Could it be that we've lost this understanding in our modern world? Have we become so focused on progress and innovation that we've forgotten the importance of balance and humility? The Book of Adam and Eve offers a cautionary tale, but it also offers hope. It tells us that while destruction may be inevitable, so too is the possibility of rebirth. Each time a civilization falls, there is an opportunity to build something better, to learn from the past, and to create a more just and harmonious society. But this can only happen if we are willing to reflect on our actions and make the necessary changes. So what does this mean for us today? Are we, as a society, heading toward another fall? Or are we capable of breaking the cycle and building a future that avoids the mistakes of the past? The book doesn't provide clear answers, but it does encourage us to ask these difficult questions. It challenges us to think about the choices we make, both individually and collectively, and to consider what kind of legacy we want to leave for future generations. What do you think? Is humanity trapped in an endless cycle of destruction and rebirth? Or is there a way for us to change our fate? Can we learn from the past? Or are we doomed to repeat it? Share your thoughts in the comments and let's continue this conversation.